Hello, everybody, and welcome back. It is me, Cyber Warrior. This is Cyber Warrior Studios, and you are watching Tech Tuesday. So now, if you haven't followed along to the different Tech Tuesdays along the way, you might want to go back and watch last week's because it is when we did the install for Security Onion. And with that, we showed you how to get it all installed in the VMware workstation, get everything set up, and we stopped. Why? Well, because today we're going to look at the web UI. And before we go any further, if you have not subscribed yet, go ahead, hit that subscribe button. And then after you hit that subscribe button, go ahead and smash that like button and like this video. Now, in order to um, take a look at our web UI, we have to make sure that it's up, which I've already done. I'm in VMware Workstation. So once you bring it up, what you would do, what you can do to log in instead of doing everything through VMware Workstation, you can actually SSH into it. So right now, we're going to SSH into our box. And the, what I like about this is, A, the font's bigger. So you're not, because it's CentOS and you have these issues with font size and things of that nature, um, this allows me to make the screen bigger. And I get a lot more features just using SSH and trying to use the uh, VMware Workstation console directly because I haven't set up all the tools and everything else that go along with it. You want to go do that feel free go do that um, the other beauty of it is we actually get our default gateway password so that we know for communicating with security onion what the I or not default gateway password default gateway IP so you can actually log in you can actually see this IP here and we can do some searches but now we're logged in and we see our interface our we can log into the web interface at this address so what we're gonna do is we're gonna copy it and even though I'm already there, we'll just go and paste it and then hit enter. And hey, we get brought to the login screen. So we're going to go to contact at cyberwarriorstudios.com. We're going to type in our password. No, we're not saving it. And we're going to get logged in. All right, cool. So we're logged in the security onion. So what do we do from here? Well, one thing I do want to tell you is this home screen can be configured however you want. So if you want to put your own logo on it, if you want to put your own README, if you want to do anything like that, you can do that and it's all in Markdown. So you can go to um, the message of the day file and you can change it to be whatever you want and make sure it looks how you want it to look. But that's just the overview. So what do we do from there? Well, well, of course, what do we use Security Onion for? So we're going to use it for alerts. So we're going to go in here and we're going to look at all the alerts. And in here, we have 17 alerts right now. All right, not bad. And it's just because I've started up, shut down, and did a few, uh, a few other things throughout the day just to get logs in here. And we see here the top one says Login Session Open. So we click that and we'll say Drill Down. And it'll give us the drill down for all those times those login sessions were open and the time stamps and everything like that. And actually we have some older logs in here. So they're still here from before, um, from when I first started it up. So you go in and you look. And again, this is just the first round or the first set of alerts. You go down here and you see your log location. You can see what the type of uh, log was. So you have it right here at this time. Security Onion, Pam Unix, SSHD session, open for user Cyber Warrior, which is me. I just logged in, so you get that. So if you had users that weren't supposed to be able to log in, or if you wanted to be notified of every time someone SSHed in or logged in, those alerts are already generating. So you get those, and you'll be able to see exactly who uh, logged in. So from there, you're like, all right, well, those are my alerts. What's the next thing I can do? Well, the next thing you can do is hunt. And this will group things by observer name and see, you know, the different agents, the agent host beats, the ephemeral IDs, and just all these different messages. So this is update mapping. Now, I don't have a whole lot of log queries in here. I have, an S I have the Security Onion OS query, but not a lot of other stuff. So there's not much to hunt for right now, which is fine. The next thing we look at is PCAPs. Now, here's the beauty of this. If you set this up in network-only mode or evaluation mode, you can upload PCAP files, actually in any mode, you can upload PCAP files, 
It'll automatically go through and parse all those out for logs and different bits of information, destination IP, source IPs, ports, files, things of that nature. So if, you, if you're using it for logging, great, but then you can still do this. All right. Even though you're already getting network information, if you have something from somewhere else or a different machine, something you pulled offline, whatever, you can upload it right here. So don't be afraid to go in, upload your own PCAP files, and actually see what it does for you. The next thing we have is Grid. And Grid just shows your different um, roles that you have, so your, your actual management consoles. So you're, I'm running a standalone right now and then any different sensors that you have spread out throughout your network. And it'll give you your uptime, um, if you have any uh, events per second, any, uh, any connection issues or anything like that, and you get the status right here. And if there's any errors, it'll say fault. And, and the errors I have found since I started up are just when I first started up, I don't get, um, because all the services aren't running, then it'll say um, fault. But as you go through, you'll learn it. It'll come up and it'll start working. Next, we have downloads. Now, downloads are great for um, making sure you have everything. Uh, if you want to collect Windows logs, you have WinLog B. Um, there's also another tool that collects my logs for me. Um, there's Wazoo Agents, OS Query Packages, which I do have OS Query Packages installed so that we can query our operating system and things like that. And that OS query package is what will play into Fleet DM. And we will take a brief look at that. And like I said, over the coming weeks, we're going to dig further and further into all these tools. Next, we have administration. And in here is just going to be the list of users and their information within the system. That's it. All right. There's nothing else in here. It's not like you can do anything. Um, it is literally just to list out all your users. All right, cool. So we have our users, and yes, uh, uh, probably next week I'll show you how to add users and configure all their information. Next we have Kibana, and to log into Kibana, it uses your Security Onion login. So if you go there and it's like, oh, it's asking me to log in, it actually is, uh, the way they have their authentication set up, you just use the exact same username and password that you do for Security Onion for the SOC. And here we have our different data sets. We have modules that, it, that, that are being used. So OS Query, because I have that installed. Um, OS Sec, Sericata Alerts, um, let's see, Stroka, and then the different where the data sets, like what it all came from. And then you go down here, and these are all your logs. So you can go into any one of these, take a look at it, and get all your data. Now again, you use this like a normal SIM. So you can go into this Kibana board and search whatever you want. You can search, uh, you can do different database, or yeah, different uh, dashboards. You can put in different information, you can go to search here, and you can go um, Chrome, is that there? No, uh, OS, so let's see, data OS major. And we're going to say equals Windows. Let's see if that comes back with anything. Nope. All right. Um, I'll have to look because I may have done that one wrong. But it should be there. So I'll have to take a look at that one. And then let's go back home. Oops. Let's go to our desk. But let's say we want to look at different hosts. And we're going to use OS Query as the module. So this tells us that the endpoint primary ID, the endpoint name, all right? And then we're going to go down here, and we're going to say event module OS Query performance metrics, endpoint security tool. What do we have? Do we have any issues? So snapshot, and it ran that. Um, it tells us the IP that it ran it on. Um, so the reason I have two IPs here is because this is the default gateway that allows it to communicate with my actual host. Um, I'm not seeing any errors. Okay, cool. So you can go in here. There's also a JSON format, and it'll give you the exact same information uh, without looking through it all. 
So like we have uh, result code name Windows 10 Pro. Um, let's go down here. See if there's anything that stands out. IPs, parsing, security. Where's that security? I just passed it up. Oh yeah. So result dot log for the security uh, message. So on and so forth. So you have a lot here that you can look through. And this all feeds in from Fleet. This is how I got all this configured by setting up Fleet. Uh, and then we have search indexer, slash embedding, drivers, services. So a lot of logs from OS Query and from my system. So I wonder if they have, did I get it? Chrome extensions? Ah, this is the one I wanted. Oops. So let's look at our Chrome extensions. And what do we have? Chrome extensions. We got more Google OS Query. There we go. So Google Docs offline. So in here it'll tell us what the extensions are. And you can export this easily enough. Um, but this is one of the best things about it is with, with Fleet and its integration, um, it will do just about anything for you. So I really enjoy that. I like the fact that it'll query my OS and I can go through and look at all these logs and make sure it all works. So that's OS query. So let's take a look at the next thing. So we looked at Kibana. Let's look at Grafana. Grafana. All of your stats of security onion. All right, it's a little bit busy. You can go in here, you can check the uptime, the CPU usage, Kibana usage, if there's any packet loss. Um, I haven't restarted Zeke, I'm not even using Zeke. PCAP retention, monitoring the traffic, so all of your bandwidth is monitored here. And like I said, it's just a lot, but it gives you that overview of your system and everything going on with security on you. So let's close out of that. We're gonna close out of Kibana. Let's take a look at CyberChef. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I've been using CyberChef for years, even outside of Security Onion. And it is an amazing tool. You can do so much for um, decoding and decrypting different things um, if you have the ability to do it. And sometimes even using magic will work. And it'll actually find what you need on its own going as far as deep as you need it to so that's pretty cool so like we could do a two base 64 so if I put in here hello my name is cyber warrior and we do two base 64 we got our base 64 for hello my name is cyber warrior and then you can go from base 64 and you get it back so, um, CyberChef is pretty cool. I've been using it for years now, especially with um, reverse engineering and things of that nature. It just makes things a little bit easier. Next is Playbook. And this just helps you um, work out the different ways you're going to triage any alerts that you may get. So, suspicious scripting, Cobalt, cobalt Strike process, um, anything like that. And you can set your statuses. You can create new playbooks and tell it what to do everything so playbooks are pretty cool um you use them a lot in industry so you might want to get used to them uh you might also hear them called run books same concept it's what you do when an alert occurs so sometimes you take automated actions sometimes you just send out emails whatever the case may be um this is where you would go through and do all these next we have fleet dm I love Fleet DM, I'm not going to lie. Um, it's how I'm getting all these OS queries and all this information about my system. So you go here, it'll automatically label things for you with the operating system and apply these different packs, which you can actually go in and configure. So you can go to your packs here and you can say, okay, I want to edit this and put a different query on it. Um, but it has a bunch built in already, so that's why I get all that information back in uh, Security Onion and Kibana. So you have all these different queries that it already has built into it. So you, like I said, you can go in, you can configure your own, you can make it do what you want. 
um, and query for a ton of different OS information. Then you can go to your settings, you can change your organization name, URL, set up SAML login, so you can do SSO, um, SMTP, if you want to configure emails and alerts, and then your different authentication types, and you can do different enrollment secrets so that you have secure communications between your computers. Then we have the Hive, and again, this is going to use the same login as um, what do you call it? Uh, Security Onion. So, like I said, all this is the all this is the same, and you can change it um, however you want. You can actually add new users and things like that. And here, I had already escalated uh, two different file zip detections. I completely forgot about that. So, if we go into this. It's going to tell us who it's assigned to, um, the TLP, and the severity, and everything else like that. And it's going to tell us files have detected from there. Now, if I go to this one, it should be the exact same thing. Case 2, files have detected. All right, observables, nothing. And if you go back into Security Onion or Kibana, you can find these and end up looking in more details at the logs and putting the information in there. So then, and those are your cases. Like, that's the hive. It's pretty cool. I'm not going to lie. I like it. Um, let me go back now since it didn't open a new window. Oh, that ain't what I want. Ah, I lost it. Let me get it back for you guys. All right, there we go. So that's the Hive. And then last but not least, we have Navigator, which is the um, MITER attack method, Navigator, for being able to go through and look at uh, different TTPs. So if you see something, you can say, okay, I saw this. Um, let's move it. I'm trying to remember how this works now. I haven't used this one in a while. So technique controls, layer controls. And we'll have to do a whole class. I'll have to do some research on Navigator. I heard about it like two years ago and haven't really played with it much. So we'll look at Navigator together and we'll start learning about it and things of that nature. But that's a quick overview on Security Onion. Again, we'll dig in deeper uh, as time goes on. Once again, if you enjoyed this video, go ahead, like, subscribe, comment. And if you want to see any parts of Security Onion, um, and you, and you want to make sure I do a video on it, leave a comment down below letting me know what it is you want to go into further detail on. Like I said, over the next few weeks, I'll be trying to get into as much detail as I can, um, but I'd love to know your input. I'd love to know what you think, and I'd love for you to go ahead and leave those comments down there. Saying that, I hope you enjoy the rest of your week. Enjoy your Tuesday or, you know, whenever you're watching this, and I will see you all next time.